in this video, I'm going to be telling you about every single NPC you missed in the second season, starting from the ones that are pretty obvious to the ones that you definitely did not find. First up, we got the cyborg. This is a malicious NPC and he's located at the Kingdom of Rose. And his whole purpose is to sell you the lantern boat for a total of 1,500 fragments. And if you don't have enough fragments when you talk to him, he's literally just going to tell you he's busy and then he's going to leave. And you can't talk to him any further. Moving on, the next NPC we got here is called Trevor. This is an NPC who is located inside Don Swan's mansion, which is literally the highest point in the map. And he's right here next to the pool. And basically, this guy is a part of the quest which lets you get into the third sea. And he's going to ask you for a physical fruit which is worth more than 1 million belly and you have to be at least level 1000 for this and if you talk to him without meeting these requirements then he's literally going to tell you get out of here before I kill you which is a pretty interesting message and if you prove to him that you have enough power he basically just lets you fight against the dawn swan boss which is a requirement to get into the second sea next up we got arrowy and this guy is obviously located at the second sea and he basically just lets you get race v3 he's located inside the secret area in the tree and according to the dialogue he's one of the sons of rip indra which is pretty interesting interesting and as everybody knows if your race is not human upgrading it to the v3 form will give you a lot of cosmetic changes next npc we got here is called sabi and this is actually sabo from one piece and he sells you the dragon's breath fighting style for a total of 1500 fragments and if you don't have enough fragments to obtain dragon's breath just like the cyborg npc from before he'll just tell you to go away but i recommend getting this fighting style because it helps you unlock superhuman later on the next npc we got here is literally named the mysterious entity and a lot of you guys have definitely seen this guy if you participate in raids he's the guy that lets you awaken your fruit every time you finish a raid with the specific fruit and you meet the requirements he's gonna let you buy your awakening for a set price of fragments which is obviously different for every fruit in the game next up we got the aura editor npc and i'm pretty sure you guys all know what this guy does he just lets you change the stage of your aura you can change it from anything from level zero all the way to level five and it looks different in each stage Next up, we got the blacksmith NPC, who basically just lets you upgrade your swords or guns, which gives you a button of buffs to them, and they can be incredibly useful. Moving on to the next location on the map, I'm going to be telling you about the one and only NPC located at the Colosseum. He's called King Redhead. You can only talk to this NPC if you're level 1500 or higher. And this guy's also a part of the quest which lets you get into the third sea. And he'll basically teleport you to an island to fight Rip Indra, which is a part of the quest. But otherwise, he's pretty irrelevant for most of the second sea. Moving on to the cafe, the one of the most important locations in the whole of the second sea. The first NPC we got here is Trot. And this guy just lets you change your race without spending any Robux. You need to pay him a total of 3,000 fragments and he randomly changes your race to something else. So if you want a specific race, make sure you have at least 9,000 fragments. But if you have the Robux for it, I just recommend using that because in my opinion, I'd rather pay 75 Robux than 3,000 fragments. The next NPC we got at the cafe is obviously the fan favorite Blocks Fruit Gotcha. And this guy is pretty self-explanatory. He's in every sea and there's no way you don't know about him. You just have to pay him a set amount of money, which depends on what level you are. And once you do that, he's going to give you a random physical fruit next up we got the bounty and honor expert and this guy's also pretty self-explanatory he just tells you what buffs you have depending on the bounty or honor you have which is gonna help you a ton when it comes to knowing what your specialties are next up we got bartillo which actually gives you the coliseum quest but you have to be at least level 850 or higher and once you complete this quest he's actually gonna give you a total of 50,000 belly 35 million xp the warrior's helmet and you can also talk to the alchemist which lets you awaken race v2 next up we got the awakenings expert and this guy just lets you change the stage of the awakenings for your food. Pretty self-explanatory. Next up, we got the color specialist. This guy lets you change the color of your hockey, which is probably one of the coolest abilities in the whole game. It looks amazing when it's a different color from the default black, and I'm really glad they added this guy. Next up, we got the title specialist, and this basically just shows you every title that you unlock and lets you equip them, and also tells you what you need for the other titles. Next up, we got an NPC called the Nerd, and this guy's actually extremely, extremely useful. And the way you use him is by wearing any accessory that you own and you just simply have to talk to him and he tells you exactly what buffs that accessory gives you so now you know exactly what you're dealing with Moving on to the huge bridge on the second scene, we got one NPC located here called Plokster. This guy's an NPC that lets you reset your stat points for a total of 2,500 fragments. And this helps people a butt ton because when you're new to the game, people actually end up messing up their stats completely. Everyone knows the most popular and best way to do your stats is to use it for melee, defense, and depending on what main you are, sword or fruit. Or gun, but no one likes guns. 
Moving on to the green zone, the first NPC we got here is the alchemist. And like I mentioned before, this guy is the one that gives you the quest to awaken your race to V2. And you need to complete Bartillo's quest from before if you want to access this guy. Next NPC here is called the mysterious man, who's located all the way at the top of the green zone. You literally have to climb to the highest stock. Or if you're a pro, you can just equip the light fruit and fly up. This guy sells you the true triple katana, but you do need to meet a lot of requirements before getting this. And even once you do that, you need to pay him 2 million belly to get this. Next NPC located here is called Mr. Captain, and if you're newer to the game, you probably won't know who this guy is. He's basically an NPC who lets you get to and from the third C. Extremely useful, especially for people that have actually unlocked it. Next up, we're moving to the Graveyard Island. The first NPC located here is called the Crew Captain. This guy's an NPC that sells you crew slots, and you can only access him if you're the captain. And for each crew slot, you need to pay a total of 2,000 fragments, and you can have up to 30 slots. And this is only useful for people that own crews, and I'm guessing most of you watching don't actually own your own crew. If you are a lower level player, it's actually easier to join a higher level player's crew. That will make your life much easier. Anyways, moving on, the next NPC located at the graveyard is actually Rip Indra himself. But he's not here to fight you, he's just here to let you change your Dark Blade skin. Everyone knows that the Dark Blade actually has two different versions. We got the Slayer skin and the default version. In my opinion, the default version looks a lot better, but the Slayer skin is actually harder to get because you have to do a whole quest for it. And this Rip Indra NPC just lets you change it from your default version to the Slayer skin. Moving on to the snow mountain, the one and only NPC we got here is the martial arts teacher. And this guy actually sells you the superhuman fighting style. And for those of you who don't know, this is one of the hardest fighting styles to get in the whole game. Because to actually be able to buy this fighting style, you need the dark step fighting style, the electric fighting style, the water kung fu fighting style, and the dragon's breath fighting style. And not only that, you need a total of 300 mastery on each of those fighting styles. You know how long that takes to get. And you also need to be above level 700 to buy this. And even after you meet all of those requirements, you need to pay the martial arts teacher 3 million belly. Oh my god, that's gonna cost you a butt ton of money and even more time. Moving on to the next island, or islands I guess, because it's the hot and cold islands. The first NPC we got here is the Arithmetic, and a lot of people actually don't know about this guy, and he's the guy that sells you the order raid microchip in exchange for a thousand fragments. And the order raid is actually Law from One Piece. If you don't know what he looks like, this is it. But just be careful when you're fighting this boss because he has a total of 256,000 HP. So make sure you get some friends along with you if you want to fight this guy. The next NPC we got here is the Mysterious Scientist. And if you don't know who this guy is, then you must be a newer player. This is the guy that lets you start any raid that you want. You have to be at least level 1100 to be able to speak to this guy. But once you talk to him, he'll give you two options. He lets you buy a raid microchip for 100,000 belly or one random physical food. And if you want to start Start advanced raid you have to pay him 1000 fragments or a fruit worth 1 million belly but trust me the advanced raids are worth it they let you awaken overpowered fruit and like i mentioned before you cannot talk to this guy unless you're level 1100 and the reason the devs added this to the game is because people below that level are usually not ready for raids and trust me because i was one of those players who joined a raid with my friend and it did not end well moving on to the next island we're going to be talking about the cursed ship the first npc we got here is el rodolfo this is an npc that sells you the bizarre rifle for 25 5 ectoplasm and he's found at the bottom floor of the cursed ship near the ship engineers next up we got l admin and this guy sells you the midnight blade for 100 ectoplasm and he's found in the middle row of the cursed ship next up we got l Perro, and this guy sells you the ghoul mask for a total of 50 ectoplasm and if you're wondering the ghoul mask gives you 35 percent faster speed 500 energy and 10 percent life leech on all melee abilities but only a 2.5 percent life leech on npcs this is probably one of the best accessories for people who are grinding with the butterfruit because of the speed increase and the life leech. Next up, we got the Experimetric, and this guy's located at the kitchen, and this guy lets you get the Ghoul Wraith. And for that, you will need a total of 100 Ectoplasm and the Hellfire Torch, which you can get by killing the Cursed Captain. Moving on, the next NPC here is called Guashin. Guashin basically informs you on how much Ectoplasm you have, which is kind of useless because you can literally just open your inventory and check that. What a random NPC. Moving on from the cursed ship, we're heading over to the ice castle, and here we got Fio the Reformed. And this NPC basically just sells you the dead step fighting style, but to get that, you actually need to learn the dark step fighting style and have at least a 400 mastery on it. And once you do that, you have to talk to her, and she sells it to you for 5,000 fragments and 2.5 million belly. Damn, that is a lot of money and fragments. Moving on, we're heading over to the Forgotten Island. Here we got Dairok the Shark Man, who sells you the Shark Man Karate fighting style. And just like the Death Step from before, this is the upgraded version of another fighting style, which is Water Kung Fu. So to get this, you need at least a 400 mastery on Water Kung Fu, and you need to pay this guy a total of 2.5 million belly along with 5,000 fragments. And not only that, you also need to get the Water Key after defeating the boss on this island, which is not an easy task. 
Next up, I'm gonna be telling you about a secret remote island that you guys did not know in the second tier. There's only one NPC here and he's called the Strongest God, who's actually, who I think is supposed to be Usopp from One Piece. This guy basically just sells you the legendary gun Kabucha for a total of 1,500 fragments. And fun fact about this island, it's actually also called Usopp's Island. And that's it.